hiding from the dog man. Dear Scary Stories NYC, I have a dog man story that happened to me five summers ago. I was out hiking mostly off trail in the Susquehanna State Forest in Pennsylvania. If you haven't been there, then you won't know that it's like a thick and dense northern jungle. You're not home in the city anymore. You're in the middle of nowhere. One evening, I was looking for a place to camp out for the night when I saw a dogman off in the distance heading in my direction. What do I mean by that? Well, I looked forward, and around some trees came a tall, hairy beast walking right into my view. He seemed unaware that anyone else was around at all, and he was just walking bipedally through the woods. He had grayish fur that had darker parts and some almost reddish parts mixed in as well. It was not all one solid color, but I honestly don't remember too much detail about the patterns of colors. Fear gripped me, and I felt a need to hide before that thing saw that I was there. I remember slipping out of my backpack, sticking it behind a bush, then running over to a different bush next to a big old tree and hiding myself behind that one. So the situation was that I had the tree behind me and the bush in front of me. I had my back right up against the bark of that trunk and I realized that I could probably be seen from the front as the bush was a little thin in spots. I grabbed some of the branches in front of me and I pulled them around in to either side I felt like I was probably completely hidden at that point. I was very concerned that the dogman would be able to sniff me out with his heightened sense of smell, but there wasn't anything I could do about that except to try to stay calm and sweat as little as I could. Of course, that made me nervous, and I'm sure it made me sweat even more. It sounded to me like the dogman was over by where I had left my backpack and I could hear him sniffing loudly, like a bloodhound or something. There was very little noise in the woods on that evening, and so the sniffing sound he made was very easy to make out. The creature had been alerted to my presence by the backpack, and now it was smelling around the entire area. I felt like I was going to die of fright long before it even found me. That's how terrible this moment in time was. I had always been lucky when I was out hiking and camping, and this felt like my luck had just run out. The branches I had pulled around me took some effort to hold in place, and so my arms and my hands were starting to stiffen up and ache. My fingers hurt too, but I was deathly afraid that if I tried to shift my position at all, that would signal the dogman as to where I was. There wasn't any way to hold it any longer, though, so I took my chances, and I twisted the branches sort of behind my wrists. This way, at least my fingers could get a rest while my arms did all the work. Sure enough, the dogman came over to investigate the rustling of the leaves that I had caused. I felt tears rolling down my face, and they tickled. I felt like I had to sneeze, but I held it in with all my strength. I was never so tense in all my life, and I was never so scared. Soon I could hear the loud sniffing of that dogman, sniffing the very bush I was behind. I could make out the shadow of his body, and his odor made it even harder not to sneeze. I prayed for the thing to go away. My arms were trembling under the pressure of holding those leaves in place around me. This was the worst moment of my life, and I was wondering if it might be one of the last moments of my life, too. Imagine being stuck in my position, your back to a big tree, the dogman in front of and over you, sniffling and snuffling a couple of feet away. I could look up and see those giant teeth that everyone talks about. It was like seeing a legend, and at the same time, it was like seeing a whole world of pain about to chew my head off my neck. I was trembling all over. I was involuntarily crying silent tears, and I was fighting a very deep urge 
to wet myself. I think I might be allergic to dogman fur as well because I was trying extremely hard not to sneeze. Why couldn't that creature go away? I needed to rest my arms. I needed to sneeze. I needed a break. The dogman moved his long snout deeper into the bush and I lost all control of the situation. I sneezed one of those loud shouting kinds of sneezes and I rose up simultaneously. I think I actually startled the dogman as there was one very brief moment as I stood there in the middle of my epic sneeze and I swear I saw him take a step back. Seizing the opportunity, I ran around behind that tree and toward another one. This tree had big, thick, strong branches low to the ground, and I kind of Jackie Chan my way up, hopping on one branch, then propelling myself onto the second one, then back to the first, until I'd gotten myself fairly high up, maybe 10 or 12 feet off the ground. I never knew I could even do that, but when you are afraid of a huge carnivore, that's right behind you. Sometimes the adrenaline kicks in and helps out. I probably couldn't recreate that trick right now, for example, but I was far more motivated on that evening. So I had gotten a bit up into a tree, but I knew I had to get higher to be safe. So I wrapped my arms around the central trunk and prepared to scoot up when I discovered that my arms and my hands were still a bit numb and unresponsive from holding the bush in place for so long. I flapped those arms like I was a chicken, then realized I just needed to let them rest and recover. Suddenly, the dogman was below my feet. He was reaching up toward me, and in my head I did the visual math, and I knew he was tall enough to still sink his claws into me. I found myself scooting up that trunk to a higher branch, before I had even consciously thought about doing it. My hands and my arms ached, but suddenly they remembered how to work at least. They talk about mind over matter. Well, this was mindlessness over matter, because I found the less I thought about what to do, the more I had the power to accomplish what needed to be done. Before I knew it, I was seated up in a V high on the top of the trunk, and I was resting my aching arms catching my breath and looking down at that dog man staring up at me and growling as he circled the tree below. It appeared he was searching for a way to climb up the tree after me, so I didn't feel safe at all. I felt like I had to get from there to another tree, and I gazed around until I located the closest option. Some of the branches of this tree intermingled with the branches of an even taller tree. My mind and my gut told me I'd be safer over there, but I knew I lacked the strength to go from where I was to where I needed to be. That was when I did something counterintuitive. I closed my eyes. I leaned back against the branch behind me, and I emptied my mind of all thought. I focused on my breathing, not listening to anything else. In other words, I went into a light meditative trance, and I was doing that because someone once told me that 10 minutes of deep meditation was as restful as several hours of sleep. I don't know if that's literally true or if it was meant in a poetic way, but it was the sole option open to me. I blocked everything out and only allowed in the awareness of my own breathing. In, out, calmer, and deeper. The dogman bellowed a kind of scream or roar from below. I opened my eyes and I jumped into action. I found myself holding onto a branch that was mostly parallel to the ground below, my belly to the branch, sidling along, closer and closer, toward the thinner end. My goal was to slide along until I found a branch from the next tree over that I could grab, and then I was hoping to move to that tree where I could climb higher and hopefully get out of the dogman's range of sight. I had devised this plan when I thought the dogman was about to climb the tree after me, but now I found I had a different kind of problem. I inched forward, seeing that man-eating monstrosity patrolling the ground far below. Suddenly, 
I heard a cracking sound, and one of the branches, which I had not realized was in fact supporting the one I was clinging to, started to snap beneath me. That caused my branch to quickly drop down about 6 to 12 inches and begin wobbling up and down. Now I was looking at the ground below move closer, then further, then closer, and I realized that branch might go too any second. I was far enough up in the tree that I knew I couldn't make that fall without damaging myself in some way. I might twist an ankle, I might sprain a wrist, or I might bang my head in the plunge and just be done for completely. And as I stared at that hard-looking rocky ground beneath me in horror, the dog man walked right into my frame of vision and started barking at me like he had never been so infuriated with anyone before. I closed my eyes again, but this time it was because I was too afraid to look. I had never felt a fear of heights before, but suddenly I felt frozen. And I didn't want to see that dog face anymore either. It made me so scared that it was hard to even hold on to the branch any longer. I had reverted to infant mode. I just wanted to curl up into a fetal position and hope my mommy came to rescue me. The dogman growling and barking below had stunned me, but as it continued in a threatening and annoying manner, it also eventually woke me back up. My survival was up to me, and I had to be grateful for what I had, not scared of what might happen. I hadn't fallen yet, the branch hadn't cracked beneath me yet, and there was still the possibility of retreating back toward the main trunk behind me. I opened my eyes and saw that fear old dogman so far below, and it made me feel so hopeless all over again. Then I told myself it was actually a good thing to see the dogman all the way down there. It meant that he wasn't trying to climb the tree after me. It also meant that the original reason I had climbed out on that limb was now gone. I didn't need to go tree to tree to escape. I just needed to get back to that V in the trunk and sit more comfortably and then wait the dogman out. Filled with as much hope as terror, I tried moving backward on the branch, only to hear a loud cracking sound. The branch I was holding onto was about to break away. It was a now or never situation, so I tried to move backward even more vigorously. And then, the branch cracked even more and I found myself and that branch swinging around until BAM we slammed right into the tree trunk. The branch hadn't broken all the way, it was still attached at the bottom and I found myself hanging upside down from it. Leaves and twigs rained down on the dogman below, but I remained up there, clinging on for my life. I had to risk grabbing another thick-looking branch and then swinging my feet sideways, counterclockwise from over my head, to beneath me again. And when the full weight of my body was once again beneath me, I found my worn-out arms almost giving way once again. I breathed heavily, trying to get some air back in my lungs. I wasn't sure how far I had fallen, but I was extremely paranoid that I might be low enough for that dogman to reach my feet. For that reason, I pulled and pulled and kicked at the air until I was able to get my entire body on the top side of that branch. I was so out of breath that I was seeing dark spots at the edge of my vision. I needed to stay conscious more than anything else, I knew that. And then, as I drew closer to passing out, I could no longer even remember that. I started to think, it would feel so good to let go and get some sleep. I just wanted to close my eyes and dream, rather than having to work so hard and panic so much. As I breathed more easily, though, my mind came back to me, and it dawned on me that I was safe, at least for the moment. I didn't need to rush to get back to the V in the tree. I could stay on that branch as long as my body needed me to do so. As long as I stayed awake, I was going to be all right. Then I heard an explosion so loud and so unexpected that I momentarily let go of the branch and nearly fell. My groggy mind took some time to put it together that I had heard a shot. I looked below, and the dogman 
was gone. I soon saw a crazy looking guy wearing camouflage clothing and carrying a very large weapon running past the tree below. I guessed that he must be running after the dogman. I wanted to thank him, but that would have taken too much of an effort. I later did climb back to the V at the top of the trunk and I was able to get some rest as I sat there till morning. I hadn't heard the dogman come back, but I was too chicken to climb down until the sun was up in the sky. I found my backpack and when I did so I drank a lot of water and then ate something. That's really the end of the story at that point. I went home as fast as I could after that which was a several day journey since I wasn't 100% sure where I was exactly. I use GPS when I go out since then, but back then I thought I was fine with just a compass. I also never hike without a partner any longer, believe you me. And that's because I never again want to find myself hiding from the dog man. Don't go anywhere, we've got our main story coming up in a second, but first, Never since the first Big Bang has there come an EP quite like Mang. You know that there is nothing wrong when your executive producer is Mang Kong. Please join us in thanking today's executive producer Mang Kong for making this episode possible. You too can be a Scary Stories executive producer and get to see our secret uncensored Dogman episodes by joining our PayPal subscribers club at peterbernard.com or by clicking the join link under this or any of our videos. Our spokes dog, Henry Lee Dogman, will be along at the end of the show to fill in any details I may have left out. But first, let's go to the story that is featured in today's thumbnail. It's a very different kind of Dogman sighting that we call... Is Dogman fleeing or causing West Coast wildfires? Dear Scary Stories NYC, I don't know if you've been keeping up on the state of wildfires out west this year, but my family actually relocated all the way from California to Florida, in large part to get away from these out of control fires. And California is definitely not the only state with a wildfire problem right now. It spreads all the way eastward to states past Montana and Wyoming to North and South Dakota. Unlike most families who arrived at their decision to move gradually, mine came to the idea suddenly and irrevocably when we saw a dogman running ahead of one of these fires, or more to the point, walking ahead of it. Was he merely attempting to flee as we were, or was his involvement in the fires something more frightening? Sometime during the summer of 2020, my wife and son and I went camping to get away from the news, basically. We just sort of bought camping equipment, then wandered off into the woods, cutting ourselves off from human insanity for a while. It was really wonderful for the first couple of weeks, but then one morning, we woke up, coughing. I got out of the tent to find that the air smelled like smoke, even though we couldn't see what direction the fire was coming from. We packed up quickly and our son complained about not getting breakfast. We told him to eat trail mix because we needed to get out of there and we hadn't even figured out yet which direction we needed to go. My wife and I were deathly afraid that we'd walk right into the fire instead of away from it. And that is sort of what happened, at least in a way. We had parked our car in a spot near the woods and we had tried to go directly northeast ever since then. The idea was that if we traveled southwest, we could once again find our car. We had fortunately also marked it on our GPS thingy, which my wife understands how to work better than I do. She said we had a three mile trek to get back to the car, assuming that the fire wasn't located between us and that location. I am not a praying man, but I began to pray inside my head that my family and I would make it out of this situation alive. When we reached a clearing on a high spot of land, we saw it, off to our left, the fire. It was far enough away that if we moved fast, we should be able to steer clear of it, at least enough to get back to our car safely. We were going to really have to book it though, as it did seem to be coming in our general direction. We also saw a huge figure marching in front of that fire. It almost looked like he was leading a parade. 
He wasn't running from the fire. He was walking in front of it. My son was looking at the situation through our binoculars and he started to say weird stuff that made no sense to me. Eventually, he demanded that my wife and I look through the binoculars too so that we could see what he was calling a dog man. What's a dog man? We both asked him in an annoyed fashion, assuming, as parents sometimes do, that our son was being foolish. My wife thought he meant that series of children's books called Dog Man, and she grew annoyed that he would joke around or revert to childishness during an important moment like this. When I looked through the binoculars, I wanted to see that big man. I didn't care about what my son was saying, but when I was finally able to focus in on the man leading the fire parade, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I put the binoculars down, rubbed my eyes, then began trying to find the man in the binoculars again. Because it wasn't a man. It was some kind of Bigfoot with a dog head. The snout was so long, it almost looked to me like a hairy alligator head. Only alligators don't have pointed dog ears up on top, and their heads aren't on the shoulders of massive Bigfoot bodies. And like I said before, he was just marching ahead of the fire, heading in our general direction, and not appearing to be in any kind of a rush. Well, contrary to that figure that my son called a dogman, we were in a rush. I felt like I was having a nightmare. Fires were scary enough, but fires and a hairy fang-faced monster? Seriously, I thought I was still asleep. We did eventually make it to our car a few hours later, exhausted from all the hiking. I felt like it took all day, and I think it actually did take about four hours. I never had a workout like that before. When we got home, our electricity was out due to rolling wildfires, and we decided on the spot that we were going to move. It took us a couple of months to decide where to move, but the seed had been planted on that day. The enigmatic dog-headed figure that we saw, why was it there? Was it fleeing the fire? If so, why was it not in a rush of any kind? I almost got the feeling that maybe it had set the fire. Maybe it enjoyed the fire. I know that sounds paranoid, but... This looked like an evil creature, like a biblically evil creature, you know? Like something demonic or otherworldly. What was it doing in that forest? And where was it walking to? It didn't feel like it was just any animal. It felt like it had intelligence. And it felt like it was there for a bad reason. My son disagrees and says that the creature was simply walking away from the fire, that's all. My wife refused to look through the binoculars and regards the conversation as infantile. But still, even though we live on the other side of the country now, my son and I continue to debate. Was Dogman fleeing or causing the West Coast wildfires? Thanks for watching till the end. If you liked what you saw, please consider clicking like on the video or sharing it with your friends and family that you think might also be interested. If you would like to see more of our work, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon next to the subscribe button so that YouTube will alert you when we put out a new video. To become a channel member and gain access to our special perks, you can click that join link under each of our videos. Another option is to join our PayPal Subscribers Club at PeterBernard.com. You can join for as little as 99 cents on YouTube or a buck fifty at PeterBernard.com, and that gains you access to our weekly secret uncensored episodes. If you'd like to see our 21 hours of archives of uncensored Dogman stories, then please join at the $3 level or above. To get to watch our shows in advance of the public, please join at our $10 level that gets you all the perks. We're working on figuring out how to add the $10 level to the PayPal Club too. If you join our channel memberships, you need to check our community page here on YouTube in order to get the links to the secret videos and other perks. If you're in the PayPal Subscribers Club, Peter will email you all the news and links himself. Once joining the PayPal Club, which is Peter's homemade club, please give him a chance to see that you've joined 
and to compose you a personal welcome email as none of that is automated. But whichever you join, we'll name you an executive producer for the next available episode. Do you have a scary experience that you'd like to share with us? You can email us at scarystoriesnyc at gmail.com or call our Scary Stories voicemail hotline at 804 Lascary. That's 804 537 2279. It's a Google voicemail box, so that means it keeps cutting off after every three minutes. If your story is longer than that, Please keep calling back and we can piece it together on our end. Good night and have a scary tomorrow. Come back for more scary stories.